Okay. Yeah, so um so so last week we ended you know um so last week rather we we commenced Windows Server and virtualization course, you know, where Xion, who is also a co-founder of ours, you know, took us through the basics of Windows Server and virtualization. Then I also took time to show you through some useful hacks on Windows Server. That was on Wednesday nights. I and I'm sure that at least um people that joined, right, you know, had a wonderful time. So um and again the scope of the assignment was shared to everybody so you all are expected to present to the faculty leaders by tomorrow evening all right so this we do this we do so that at least everybody can brainstorm and share ideas in your various groups and by doing so you are able to work as a team because really devops itself is it's it's all about bringing together you know different people with um, different skill sets to automate and release a product. So collaboration is key, 100%. And I would say that um, in my DevOps career, right, 70% of the difficult tasks that I've encountered or that I encounter every day are solved, especially when I'm on maybe like a team's call with my colleagues, you know, where we, um, uh, where I learn or we all learn you know, different approaches to solving issues daily. So the, the need for collaboration cannot be overemphasized, right? That is why we want everybody to work as a team, discuss, brainstorm on everything that would be um, showed or everything we are going to teach you, right, on this, um, on this platform. So please don't we give assignments and place you in groups. It's because again, we need you to collaborate and work as a team. Let's also note that all of the lessons taught within this bootcamp are the things that you would come across in your DevOps journey, right? So don't be tired, don't, don't be weary, right? We can all do this. Do you understand? We can all do this because DevOps itself has a steep learning curve. You get to learn so many things, but we are here to teach you the basics of what you need, right? Because really, you don't need to know all the tools in DevOps or all the tools that you that you make use of in DevOps before you become a DevOps practitioner. No, you don't need to know everything, but we're just here to you know, tell you some of those things that you can at least, at least start up with. You can't attend any interview and they'll say that, oh, okay, because you don't know how to use Jenkins, but rather you know how to use uh, Circle CI you won't be employed. No company would, would reject you for not knowing a particular tool, right? But then we are showing you the needed, at least fundamental tools that you need to know. Because you don't know Kubernetes right now, because you know Docker, but you don't have like a, a fundamental understanding about Kubernetes, doesn't mean that you are not on your path to greatness. So, and again, you can learn Kubernetes first and now go back to learning Docker. No, you know, you have to, you know, learn um, the basics, which is of course Docker on how to build containers and how to create your image before you now go to Kubernetes, do you understand? So those are part of the things that you need to understand. You don't learn CD and then now go back to CI, right? So please let's, so, these are the things that, again, will not teach you things that won't be useful or, or things that are abstract. We'll only show you best practices of the things that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, please go through all our videos on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page is das.ng. You won't miss it, dwas.ng. Then subscribe on the channel so that you don't have to miss out on any information. And if you have any question whatsoever, please feel free to send us a message on our Discord channel, right? My handle on, on Discord is Dapsim, D-H-A-R-P-S-O-N. That is my handle. Um, Co-founders, Nuruddin, his own Discord name is Fonton, P-H-O-T-O-N. Why Ulua Shion? You would you would see his name there, Ulua Shion. Then several of our faculty leaders as well. Um, also, I think Femi, Femi as well, Eche, Yetunde, 
Joshua, so many of them on the, on the Discord page. So please kindly reach out to them and we'll be good to go. So enough of the intro. I just had to say this again to reiterate it so that we don't just go and you know start learning and um, won't know the motive of, of what we are doing. So that being said, I'll take the back seat for now and we are set for this afternoon's lecture, which again is Linux administration. Right, so Linux is like the bedrock of anything you'd work on within DevOps, right? Like, I won't even hide it. If you don't know Linux, then, sorry, um, your DevOps journey will not be complete because as time goes on, most of the tools we'll start working on will be strictly on Linux. And that is why we'll be taking two weeks, two sprints to talk about Linux and PowerShell, two very important um, concepts, Linux, and PowerShell or Bash, right? So we we'll stress very well on Linux, like we we'll would overstress it so that we can get the basics. Assignments will be shared by um, Nurudin. I'm sure that once it comes on, you would um, tell you what you need to know. Again, Linux administration is very, very important. In fact, that's like the basics, like that's the fund that that's like the fundamental block of anything you would do. In DevOps, because once we go on to Ansible, Ansible is going to be on Linux, Terraform. Well, Terraform is a mix. Um, Docker, Docker is on Linux. Kubernetes, Linux. Do you understand? Bash is on Linux. So again, please let us take it very seriously. So that being said, um, this course will be handled by our co-founder, Nurudin Camilo. So Nurudin, if you are ready, please you can go ahead. I'll stop sharing now. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yes, can hear you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, can. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's nice to be with you all here today. And um, I believe um, some of you already know me. My name is Nerudin Kamilu, and I'm also a co founder of um, DAS, that is DevOps and Service Nigeria. And um, today, basically, I'll be taking us on introduction to Linux administration. And um, yeah, therefore, I said a lot of things. And um, one of the reasons why today's class and every other class are very, very important because this is actually going to give you a foundation of what you need to know. And when the foundation is not solid, then every other um, building or any other construction you are making on it is actually going to collapse. So I just need you to do two things for me today. Um, the first thing I need you to do is that um, please be attentive as much as you can. Please be attentive as much as you can because um, by the time I start, I don't want to scare you, but I have tried to, you know, um, simplify, um, you know, the introduction in such a way that it will be easy for you to comprehend. That is one. And then um, the second thing I also need you to know is that always know that, you know, there is no stupid question. So if you have a question, you can actually note down your question probably along the line. If I could have answered your question or maybe after the session, then I can answer um, your question. So today um, I will take you on Linux administration, like I said, and um, I will actually be guided by this outline just, you know, just to touch um, some major part of Linux that I believe that, you know, you can easily work with and you find it most often as a, what you call it, as a DevOps engineer, that is you will actually be assigned with tax or you have to do one or two operations on a Linux device and you have to use um, you know, some of these um, features that Linux offers. So I will take us through like a brief introduction on um, Linux. Then I will also take us through what is the Linux terminal and what are the basic commands um, that you need to know um, when it comes to Linux. Then uh, another important thing is also the file system hierarchy in Linux and also file permission when it comes to a Linux um, server. Then um, also I will also talk about um, user management in Linux, just like the way we have um, Windows that we have user management on Windows what is uh, user management on Linux? How does it differ from user management on um, on a uh, what's called 
on the Windows system. And um, finally, we will talk about Linux processes and uh, what's it called and um, software um, management. So, like I said, I just want you to follow me carefully. And um, this class is actually going to be more of an hands-on. And um, because of that, I'm going to probably use a CLI to actually run some command. And if you are with a Linux system, I will advise you to actually do similar things that I'm doing. And um, if you don't have, have, have what's it called, a Linux um, OS installed with you, I'm going to share with you a link whereby you can have a Linux playground. I'm going to share my screen also. And um, this playground, you can use this playground um, for anything we want to do. So I'm going to first of all share the link on the um, on the meeting um, chat. Just a minute. Just give me a minute. Let me quickly do that. Okay, I think I need to share the screen also. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Please confirm that you can see my um, Chrome. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I have just uh, what's it called? I will be dropping uh, what's it called a a what's it called on the on the corner. I'm going to drop um the web address. And um, this web address, I want you to actually open it because it's a more like a playground that you can actually use. Although it is timed, but you can always restart the playground. So when you open the web address, you just click on start. And once you start, you can start, it's basically start a Linux um, container for you. And um, yeah, you have an interface. So basically the interface below is what you actually need. So you can probably run one or two commands while I'm doing the same thing during um, the class but i am not going to be using this interface and as you can see the interface is just for 30 minutes so if it stops then you can at the same time go to the same url open another uh, what's it called reload the page or and it also creates another what's it called another linux um, container for you so i just basically uh wanted to um to show you that um so back to today's um session um i'm going to start with a very little introduction about linux um, Linux is actually an open source um, operating system that was um, that was developed by a Finnish um, engineer. Um, his name is um, Linus Tovad. And uh, what do I mean by an open source um, OS? Basically, when they say open source, open source basically means a software with the, in which you have the source code that anyone can inspect, modify, or enhance, so as such as to what improve the what the functionality of such a software. So based on this, we have you know different uh, what's it called different distribution of Linux. What I mean by distribution, you can you can hear another person tell you that we call it Linux distro, you know, and because of the fact that it is an open source um, operating system, that is, it gives people the opportunity to what to modify the source code to enhance or to inspect or do one or two changes. Based on that, we have a lot of distro, like I said, we have distro like Ubuntu, as you can see on the screen, we have Red Hat Linux, we have Fedora, we have CentOS, we have, you know, Kali Linux, we have Amazon Linux, and so on. These are all different distros. Some people call it Linux um, family, some people call it Linux flavor. So you can actually get different, the different things, but they all are Linux, what they call it? They all are still the same, um, Linux, um, what is it called? The same Linux OS, and you know, you basically still run the same command, except except for some little differences between what the different um distros. So, um, for a newcomer, basically, um, Linux is actually a difficult, uh, what is it called? OS to operate, and um, the reason why we have um such uh, what is it called? Such um challenge is because of the fact that in Linux, we basically work with terminals. Terminals is just more like an interface where you basically put in your commands that you want to run. So we have terminals in Linux and um, on Windows though, you have a terminal and uh, at the same time you have what's called a GUI, a graphical user interface that is where you can move your mouse around. You can do a lot of things. You can actually see like a UI interface. And that does not mean that there are not Linux devices with UI interface. That is not all Linux are actually, you know, not only not um, OS are actually um, terminal based. Some are also, you know, some are also graphical user. Some are also some also have GUI. But most times you find yourself as what you call it, as DevOps engineer or as early Linux user 
working on the terminal 90 percent of your time wherever you're on a linux server so with that people are more convenient in fact when most people install linux servers they just install the words they just install the um the um the what you call it the ones that has what a terminal uh what you call it interface that is um that is one then another thing that also makes um linux um very difficult for people to also use at least for newcomers is the file hierarchy system in a windows device for example um when you log on to a windows device you have downloads you have documents you have music you have um videos that is like for every users in a linux in, in a windows device and um the file hierarchy system in linux is a bit different from what is it called from windows because for linux we, every file must actually start with a root so which is actually a different thing and we have some other I uh, was called some other file system like having like the um, slash um, slash bin. We have like um, it, um, etc. We have like uh, what's it called? It's var. So this, this uh, I I don't want to talk about too much um, terminology because I'm actually going to explain some of these um, terminologies I'm mentioning. I'm actually going to explain them further during my um, presentation. So this file hierarchy system makes it very difficult for newcomers or let me say newbies to actually administrate on what you call your administer um, Linux um, devices. Another thing is on Linux, navigation is difficult and different. In the Windows device, you can actually take your mouse, you know, just navigate around your, what you call it, around your system, click on anything, maybe you saw something you want to click on, when it clicks on it, it gives you another, uh, what you call it, another UI, then you click, click, click until you perform your, what you call it, until you perform what you want to do. But in Linux, it is completely different. It is completely different. You don't just move mouse around. When you just put, when, when, when you tap on the arrow key, that is arrow up key, it has a meaning. When you put an exclamation mark on uh, what's it called, and what's it called, and an interface, it has a meaning. When you put a dollar sign on the interface, on the terminal, it has a meaning. So this navigation also is something that also makes it a bit weird for newcomers to actually, you know, find yourself convenient with Linux administration. Then finally, we have what we call file manipulation. In the Windows system also, when you want to read any file, let me say you want to read a TXT file in Windows, you just click on the file and it opens for you, right? And you're able to read it, even though it's a Word document or whatever document that you have. But in Linux, it is different. What I mean that it is different is that if you want to read a file, any file you want to read in Linux, you always use the cat command, C-A-T. That's a command that you can actually use to read anything in Linux system. Another thing in Linux system is that um, your extension does not matter. Like this, the file extension that you have, maybe .png, .txt, it doesn't matter. What Linux actually reads is the content of the file and kind of the structure of the file. With that, Linux is able to uh, identify or categorize that this file is this particular type of file. So it's not necessarily that they have to put extension. Sometimes when you just put, type a touch command on like touch command, like touch, maybe you want to create a new file, touch like um, touch new file, for example, it creates a new file for you. Whether you put an extension to that file, maybe touch new file.txt, touch new file.docs, doesn't mean that you cannot edit that file. So these are some of the things that makes Linux administration a bit different from what uh, Windows um administration now i know that you know a question might come to your head that you know yes you've been talking about linux but what about unix is there any difference between linux and unix are they the same thing that's a good thing that i expect that should come to your head i must tell you that linux is basically a unix like os what i mean is that linux basically originates from unix however there are differences Number one difference is that Linux is open source. However, most Unix are not open source. An example of a Linux OS that we know is Ubuntu, Red Hat, Oracle Linux, like you have on the, on the screen, Amazon Linux, Kali Linux, CentOS. These are examples of what Linux OS. For Unix, you can have in like Mac, for example, Mac OS is a Unix based OS, OM, a Unix based um, operating system. That is an example of Unix. Another thing about Unix is that most times, most Unix devices are actually designed to actually you know, solve particular problem. And 
they use it most times in computations, I mean, in all these computer and computing operations. They use it in you know complex mathematical calculations that has to be solved, calculated problem solving. These are very, very use, uh, use cases of what of Unix and uh, what called operating system. So it's not as if you know um it's that different. You still have commands that are actually very, very similar. Like this, when you are running on the terminal, you run almost similar commands because, like I told you, Unix originates from what's it called? I'm sorry, Linux originates from um from a Unix. So this is like more like you know more like um the similarities and the differences between your Unix and what's it called and um and um, a Linux um, OS. And nothing about open source that I didn't talk about is that most open source software are usually free. We can remember in our last class when Uluwashen was taking you through um, on Windows operating system, he talked about the fact that you are going to download a trial version that you can use for, I think, 90 days, if I'm very, very correct. But for all Unix, that for, 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 for Linux, which is actually an open source software, it is free. So except that you probably require cooperative or uh, sorry um, corporate support that is when you actually have to pay or no such support is available at particular prices for example red hat provides support so with that you actually have to pay for such was it called such um such um os but most times all linux os are free cent os is free ubuntu is free so these are one of the advantages of um, you know um, open source um, software and operating um, system. Now, a Linux terminal. A Linux terminal. First of all, I want to explain what is a terminal. As you can see on the screen, a terminal is basically a program that opens a window and lets you interact with the shell. It is a text-based interface on your computer. That is. Terminal is just that program that wants you to interact. And one thing you need to know that Terminal most times cannot only be found on the Linux system. You can also find Terminal on your Windows system. Command prompt, when you open Command prompt, let me, let me try and open Command prompt on my device. Command prompt, by the time you open Command prompt, it gives you a Terminal. Can you see the screen? I just dropped a Command point and what's it called, a Terminal. This is a Terminal. If you open PowerShell also, this is PowerShell. PowerShell will also give you a terminal. So basically, a terminal is just a program that you open on your system and allows you to interact with a shell. And most times people call terminal command line or they call it CLI. You can hear, and some people might say AWS CLI. That is, they're telling you that AWS was terminal at least. That programs that are open, that allows you to what? to interact with AWS core shell, whereby you can use to what provision resources on AWS. So anything that you have, when anytime you have, when you have a terminal, a terminal basically is just what? It's just a program that opens and allows you to interact with a shell. That is for terminal. I'm going to close these terminals now. And when you enter a Linux terminal, what is the first thing that you see on the Linux terminal? Let me just try and open a Linux terminal for you. When you enter a Linux terminal, this is um, just a minute. Um, let me open. For you to log into Linux terminals, we have you know a lot of tools that are, can actually be used to what to log on to a Linux terminal. And most times, you communicate with the Linux terminal through a protocol called SSH. That is Secure Shell. This protocol runs on port 22. So these are like simple interview questions that you can be asked. I am not going too deep, but trying to make it simple and for you to pick it one step at a time. Now, for Linux terminals, when you want to interact with Linux, you can use a lot of, you know, lot of um, tools that allows you to what, so communicate with what, with the Linux server on what, on port 22, that is true SSH protocol. A simple one that we have is we have what we call M remote ng, we have putty, we have mobile xm, even the command prompt. Command prompt on your system can act because most um, most Windows systems now command prompt allows you to what to interact or log on to a window to a, to a Linux server. I have opened my command prompt again. Now I want to interact with my Linux server that I've actually created for this what is it called for this session. Let me SSH into it. I'm actually going to explain everything to you that you have here. 
SSH um, does, um, just a minute, um, does 3.68.22.166. Now, this is a command I have on my, on my, on my, on my terminal. The first command there is saying SSH. That is, you're talking about the protocol you want to use to interact with your what with your Linux device. The next one is actually a what is it called a parameter that you know requests a what is called SSH key. Now there are different authentication mechanisms. I don't want to go te technical, but I also make this simple for you. When you want to authenticate with any OS, is that you use password based authentication or SSH authentication, that is key-based authentication. For this Linux device that I want to log on to, I am using a key-based authentication. And before I can use a key-based authentication, I need to have what's called a private key. So what I am doing here is that I am saying that I want to use SSH and I am using this I parameter to say, okay, I am specifying the key that I want to use and the key that I want to use, that private key is called DAS pen. This is an extension of what a private key. We also have other extensions like .ppk, the extension of what private key. Now, the next command here is that it talks about the username, which is DAS, and what the IP address or the host name of that server. So this is a simple word, a simple command that you can actually use. So let me press the command now and um, put in enter. What do I have? Uh, okay, good. Now I have just logged on to what my Linux device. And as you can see on my Linux device, you can see Amazon Linux too. Last time that is logged in, the IP that is logged, this is just like a what's going a customization from Amazon because this is running on AWS. That is why we have this. Now, what I want to do is this now. I want to write clear command. So most times when you log on to a Linux um server, you have this what you call it, this terminal. And what you see here is basically two things. I'm sorry, three things. The first one you see here is the username that is logged on. The username that is logged on here is what? Is DAS. The second thing you see here is what we call the IP address or the host name of such instance or that server that you are logged on into. As you can see, you can see IP is what? 172.blah, blah, 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 blah. Then, the last thing, or the last thing that is here, sorry, the, the what the third thing that is here talks about the current working directory where you have. In Linux, another thing you need to know is that whenever you have a tilde sign, a tilde sign means that you are in your own directory. You are in what? Your own directory. I will also give you command that we can use to know where you are in the Linux device. I will talk about that one in what in in other words in other slides. Then this dollar sign is just what ends. That is just like giving a what do you call it? A, it's giving a signal or a what do you call it? Sending a signal to the shell that okay, this is the end of everything that you have here. So if the shell is going to read anything, you should read anything that is after this dollar sign. That is what this means. So whenever you log on to a Linux device, this is the first thing that you see. So that is done. Now. On a terminal, I said a terminal is just a window that opens, right? And allows you to what? To interact with your shell through what? Through text-based word text. And what is now a shell? I'm going to minimize this, uh, what you call this terminal now. A shell in Linux is just a command line interpreter. Whatever command that you run on your, what's it called, on your terminal, a shell is going to interpret it and send such thing towards to the Linux kernel, which actually then gives an output. Look at this, it says it takes command from the what? From the terminal and gives the OS to perform. In Linux, we have different types of shells. We have bash shell, we have C shell, we have corn shell, which is also called the K, A, um, K shell, that is K, A, K, S, H shell. We have the Z shell and we have what? The fish. I want to tell you another thing. You don't need to be disturbed about all these types of shell. Um, shell. Most times, I tell you, 80% of your time, you will work with what? Bash shell. Even I, as an individual, I have not worked with some of these shell, but they all work. They all operate 
under the same what under the same commands and you know the same um the same principle you get and like i told you i told you in linux is an OS, is an what is an open source project so which allows people to what to make different modifications make different modification take for example c shell is actually a shell that actually supports arithmetic operations very very well and the syntax is similar to what is similar to a c programming language that is just you know that is just the way that shell has been designed and probably run now for this shell they have their complete path for this shell for bash shell the path is always like forward slash bin slash bash for c shell you don't need to know this was your you don't need to note this um, this path i'm just trying to explain some things to you c shell is forward slash bin slash c shell k shell forward slash bin slash what k shell z shell also the same thing that is just like the complete path for this shell but most times you find yourself in what you find yourself in the what in the bash uh what's called the bash shell now another thing is this when you're on a Linux device, you have to be very careful. One thing is that Linux shell are very, very case sensitive. Capital letter is different from small letter. If I try to log on to this, my Linux, uh, what's it called, sorry? If I try to log on to this, my Linux device using capital letter D as DAS and AAS, it will, what? It will flag that's an error that it does not recognize such a user that is one thing about linux another thing is that like i told you earlier i said your file extension doesn't matter i explained that in previous slide then the third con the third thing you need to know about a linux what's it called a linux terminal is that forward slash is a special character and forward slash is just used as a what a directory separator you can remember when i was talking about what is the path for some of this share? I was saying forward slash bin slash bash, right? That is to tell you that this is what I'm actually saying. So that those don't look at our, like this is what I'm saying. Bin slash bash. Can you see this terminal? That means that this forward slash that is, you are seeing here is a special character that is actually used to what that is actually used as a directory separator. That is, it is bash bin is a what is a directory. Bash is also a what. A particular directory or file so that forward slash is being used to what to separate it now the fourth one is that a linux cli or a linux terminal or a linux command line can be very dangerous so most times i tell people don't run commands that you don't understand try to understand every command before you run it on a word or a linux device Take for example, if somebody is trying to probably, you know, um, remove a file and you don't know, probably you know that, okay, if you want to remove a file or delete a file, you can use RM command and um, you are not even sure of that particular file you want to delete. And you go and probably write like a command like this, for example, you write like RM dash RF, then put dots. My dear, you have deleted everything in that directory forcefully. These are some things that we need to what you need to be careful of whenever you are on a what on a Linux um, terminal. Now, I am going to talk about some basic commands that is being run on Linux terminal. But before I do that, I also want to talk about how do you edit files on a Linux. Let me try and use a better terminal that has a good interface. Let me exit from this. Exit that means I've logged out from that terminal. I'm back to my normal command prompt. So I want to use the better terminal. Can you see this terminal? This is also another tool that can be used to log on to a Linux device. This is mobile XM. That is the same device that the same um, server that I logged on to, I am logged in here on that same server. That's the last command that I run, as you can see the last command on the, uh, on the what do you call it? On window uh, that I run on command prompt, you can see this here. No, no, no. Yes, I'm with you. Sorry for interrupting. Please, can you zoom in? Can you zoom in a bit? Okay. Is there a way you can zoom into the terminal so that's... Okay, just a minute. You... Thank you for it. Hold on just a minute.
view. Do you see anything like zoom here? Okay, terminal zoom. Yeah. Good. Terminal zoom. So let me know if you can see it very well. I'm okay. I'm going to, I'm going to continue. You can keep zooming. Just keep zooming. Okay. Just keep zooming. Hey, keep zooming. Sorry, I have a very large screen. So um, that's why it's kind of... Okay, I think that's that's fine. That's fine now. It's fine now. That's okay. fine. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is... This is a Linux, what's it called? A Linux terminal. And um, before I do so anything here, I want to show you how do you edit files on the Linux server? How do you do major editing of files on the Linux server? How do you run? How do you write commands? How do you do this thing? Now, there are lots of Linux text editor that you can use. And um, we have editors like Lano, we have VI, that is Vim, we have um, Pico, we have lots of them, like a lot and a lot of them. But one of the most popular ones that is widely used is what we call VI editor. Now, when you are on a VI editor, what do you do? Let us try and create a, what's it called, a small file. For example, let's create a TXT file. If you want to create any file, just use the touch command, you see? Touch, I'm sorry. Touch. Before before I do that, if I you can see that my ls is a command that is used to list what you have in your in your current working direction. I just run an ls command, and that ls command shows me that I don't have anything there. Now I want to create a file. Touch. Let me say text. Or let me say test file. Dot txt, let me do test file. I have created this file. This is a touch, I have created this file. So if I run ls, you're going to tell me that what? I have what? A test file in that what? In that directory. Now I want to what? I want to make, what's it called? I want to edit this file. I want to put some input inside this file. This is not a Windows device that you just click on text file and it opens for you, no. And you cannot right click here. There's no right click and you will see some options, no. So to edit it, you can use a VI editor. And the basic command for that is very simple. It's just VI, then put the name of the file, text file, and it's open what a shell for you. So on this shell, you can then write anything. But now I'm on the shell. If I type anything, it will not, it will not go. You can see that I'm, I'm trying to type. Oh, sorry, I've, I wrote, I've written another command because I typed on high. Now, I is a command in what you call it. When you are using a Vim, um, a what you call it, a VI editor, before you can edit, a command called I is actually what allows you to insert text into such interface. You can see at the bottom of my screen, you can see insert here. Do you see? That's to tell you that what I'm in a particular mode where I can put what, where I can put anything in that what in that file. So if I say okay, well, this is my first line this is my first line now i want to save what is on this file how do i save it i want to save an exit before you can save don't forget that you are still in what in sat mode that is you are in text mode so if you want to exit that text mode you need to press ctrl c you see that the insert command that was the, the insert icon that was below here is no more at the bottom of my screen. So when you click on insert, when, when you press Ctrl C, then you can use the, you, what's it called it? The colon sign, do you see colon here? Just monitor the bottom of my screen, please. You see colon, colon W allows you to write. That is you have written something, but you now want to save that right. So when I click colon W, that file has been written. Did you see? That file has been written. Now I want to exit this same was it called the same vi editor because it is not my normal uh my normal um terminal where i can run command so the same thing you do also column q then you put exclamation it allows you to exist now i want to read what is in this file i have edited this file how can i read what is in this file i said during my during my first <laughs> no. Therefore, please help me unmute anybody that is talking, please. So, if I want to read what is in this file, I want to read the content of the file. 
basically to read any content of any file in Linux, you just put your cat command. Cat will read anything for you. Cat what? File.txt and it reads for you. This is my first line. I tell you, we have just taken a very, very important step when it comes to what Linux administration. Your ability for you to edit a VI file is important and is one of the major tasks of a DevOps engineer. Many times you get to what edit configuration files and make changes on the configuration file. If this was a configuration file, then we have been able to what successfully what edit the configuration file. Now, another thing is that I, that's the, that, that's the parameter I that I put and the exclamation mark W and Q are not the only things that you can use in what for when it comes to VI editor. There are some other, uh, what's it called? There are some other things that you can use that actually makes it very, very easy for you to what to work on, um, on what's it called, to work with um, VI um, editors. I'm actually going to share a new screen for you now, just a minute. Um, I'm supposed to actually put this as part of my slides, but I didn't. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see this screen? These are some, I got this from Linux Training Academy. And these are some, what's it called? Some other options that you can use when it comes to what? When it comes to VI. This was I that I used to insert what? A cursor. That is, you can see it was small letter I because the difference between capital letter I and small letter I. You can see that capital letter I here means that what you want to insert at the beginning of the line. And probably small letter I just means that what you want to insert a cursor wherever you are at the moment that you want to edit. You can see when it comes to deleting line te text, you can see that when you put X command, X will delete what? X will delete the character. When you type D twice, it deletes the line. If you want to delete the word, use DW. And you know, when it comes to also saving, I'm going to share this file with you as part of your resources because you are going to use some of them during your assignments that I'm going to actually give you for the week. So it's important that you know you are very, very used with this word, with uh, what you call it, with, um, with VI editors. VI editors, if you cannot edit a file in Linux, then you are failed from the beginning. So it's important that you are able to do it. Let us try and use some of this command. At least let us use one or two of them during what? Um, and let us make a, an edit on that file and use some of these commands that you know that you have on the screen. Now back again to that same uh, what's it called? That same interface. Now I want to also what I want. I also also edit that same file again. This is what I have on that same file. Now I want to what I want to insert a cursor. I put an I. You see, I'm in insert mode, right? Now I want to write second line. This is my second line i love working with vi editor i have just you know i have just made changes on this file now i am going to exit this what's it called this um insert mode just by pressing command what Command Control C. Now I I feel like no 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 I don't want to put that third line. I want to delete it. Double tap D, which is part of what I showed you recently. That when you double tap D, it deletes what it deletes a line. You remember? Now you want to go back and probably do the same thing. Control R, Control Capital Letter R. Already at newest changes. Okay, people, because I've not saved the file, so. You can use some of this, what's it called? Some of this command to make editings. Now, if I'm going to exist, what's it called? Now, if I'm going to exit this editor now, I can just write, you know, the, before I wrote command um, control W at first to write and control Q to exist. Let me say I want to exist without saving. I can just do, uh, I said control, not control, um, colon sign. Now, if I want to exit this without saving, I can just do colon. Q, small letter Q, sorry, because I told you Linux is very sensitive. Then exclamation mark. It's what it exists that editor without saving what is there. So if you go back to the content, you see about your first line. So 
I will advise you that you know you try to make use of some of these what some of these um some of the features of um this um vi editor and try to practice it's important that you also try to do that during your work during your free time so back to our slides um just a minute i can't really remember where i am so sorry sorry i'm trying to look for my slide okay yeah good we're back so i have just basically you know um did some editing on what on the linux and what's called a device now what are some of the basic commands that you can run i just ran this command for you lx and what ls does is just what is just to list what is your working directory so if i have ls i can use ls if i touch another file now let me say i'm, I'm creating another file now touch um touch new file if i put ls now you can see that we have what we have two files now if i want this file to actually come in such a way that you know i want to know the date the file was modified just like you have in a window system that you see the last modified date you see all the details of the file if i do ls dash l it gives me what that format you can see this is today 20th of what 20th of what of um of um august 20 what 2022 and all this actually has meaning and i'm definitely going to explain all the meanings all, all the what you call it, different columns that you have here i'm going to explain them in our next that was going in our next slide so i don't want us to be in a rush another thing is that we are working on this server and i told you this still that sign means your what your home directory that means you are basically in our home directory but what if someone does not understand that yes i don't understand that still that means home directory how do i know how do i know the directory where i am working you can use a what is it called a command pwd pw means with present working directory when you type that command and put enter it shows you that your what you are in that's what that's home directory Am I making sense? Am I too fast? I think there are some questions. Maybe I should just hold on and see. Um, okay, someone was saying can use Zoom. Okay, good. So this is this shows that what you are in that's what current home directory. Now I want to leave this directory. I want to go to another directory. I don't want to move out of this. To move that directory, to change your directory, use the command. I said change directory. You use the command cd okay let me clear my screen first of all maybe it, you can use the directory cd let me say i want to just go to like let me say like etsy um, directory etcd directory then i can then go probably go to what okay i have a directory here i don't know if i have permission to that directory home slash um team agile for example yeah okay permission denied thank you i don't i know i don't have permission though now let me just go to like um etcd i'm going to show you i can actually run this without having permission denied but i'm going to show you later in what's it called in our other um presentations well how to avoid such errors like permission denied on the linux environment now i have just changed my directory to what etsy etc you can see that this icon that is here before has changed to what etc so if i press pwd it tells me that what i am in this what I am in this direction. And if I want to know the files that are here, I can just say ls l and it shows me all the files that are what that are in that direction. Am I making sense? I believe you are enjoying it. Okay, let me clear my screen again. I want to leave this directory now. Let me say I want to go to var dash logs or var log directory. I just run the command now. I'm going to show you what I did. If I go there now, you can see that what this has changed from etc to log that is i am in this what in this directory and if i want to know it i can also press what present working directory pwd and it shows me that what i'm in var slash what slash log directory now there, is, there are some tricks in linux they call it what we call bash completion what do i call it bash completion if you are running something in linux and you want it to auto complete for example 
or you want it to give you suggestions of what to type or what is in that parent location, you use what? Tab command. Just tap this normal tab that we have on our server, on our system, that's on our keyboard, sorry. Tab. When I click on tab, it will give you like a suggestion. You can see that while I was here, I wanted to know if we have what? If I have log directory here, and I, I was typing CD, V-A-R-L-O, but I didn't know if log was there. So I click on what? Tab. When I click on tab twice, it gives me what? Everything that has L-O. You can see this is local. This is lock. It is what? It is what? Logs also. So then I was able to say, okay, okay, I need log. Then what? I was able to type log. So these are some of the things that we use that they are auto-complete. They call it bash completion. When you move further into probably um, some other, what is it called? Some other um, tools that have to do with DevOps, Ansible, Terraform, you are going to use some of this what? Some of this, um, you are going to use tab a lot and use this bash auto-complete. So it's an important thing you need to learn to do. So take for example now, if I want to go back to my, what is it called, my, um, my directory now, I want to go back to my home directory. I told you our home directory is what? It's called um, Tilda. But before I do that, I want to leave, look at me. Remember that I'm here now. I mean what? Var dash log. I want to go back to var. I don't want to type CD dash VAR. I want to go back to the parent directory, which is VAR, but I don't want to type this command. A better way you can use is what? Just type cd dot dot, and it takes you back to what? Var. Dot dot means me, take me that to what? The parent directory of your what? Of your present working directory. I hope this is not too complicated. I'm trying to make it simple. Linux is not a simple thing that you can learn in a day, but you know, constant practice, attention, like I said, I need your attentiveness. It makes it easy for you. So you see, I've just typed cd dot dot and it takes me back to what? My present, my, my, what, my parent directory. Now I want to leave this parent directory and go back to what? And go back to my home directory. I told you tilde is what? Home directory. So I can go say td what? cd what? tilde. And it takes me back to what? My home directory. And if I click, click on type what? pwd, that is show me my present working directory. It takes me that what? I'm what? Home slash what? Slash dash. So this is some, these are some of the basic commands that you have in a what in a Linux device. Um somebody is saying VIV are the same thing. Yes, nano is another editor. Yes, I said that also. I said we have nano. How can one edit using nano? Yes, you can use nano, you can check on it. Nano, nano, you can you just like the same way you have like Vim, you can just say nano, then text file editor or Vim text file editor. So these are just you know, different, you know um editors that you can use so just to put the name of the what's it call it the name of the tool that you want to that you want to use so that's actually a very good um a very good question so now we go back to our presentation slide so i have used this i have used list i have used um change working directory i have used uh what's it called? i have used um pwd that is present working directory and when i was using list i also used what we call it ls dash what dash l right and um, here also, there's another command that's called ls dash lrt. That is, these are some of the commands. This is actually telling me, show me the time, long listing of what of the files in this present working directory. Now, there is also a command that is called echo. Echo basically means that okay, my my what is it called? Um, my Linux server, please show me just display an argument to me on the screen take for example if i type the command echo dollar path p a t h i am telling this thing to work to display what the arguments that you have it is to, to display it for me on the screen that is what echo means echo is just to tell you okay man tell me this man tell me that that is what echo means you get me so Back again, we have other commands like what's it called, like clear. I use the clear command that time to clear my screen. If you can see, clear, sorry, it's case sensitive. Now look at this now. Clear, what did it tell you? Commands not found. But if I click type clear, it, cl it, what? it clears my screen. Now, one beauty about Linux is that every command that you have been running from the beginning to the end on a Linux device, you can actually know those commands. 
And it's also one of the things that we, we use when it comes to auditing. Auditing means that, take for example, as a Linux user or as a new time Linux user, there are times that you make mistakes and your, and your boss asks you, are you the one that probably shut down that server mistakenly or you did not know you shut down the server or you make edition on the, what's it called, it's some edition on the configuration file. You say, no, no, no. There is a way your boss can get you. And this is just based on what that feature on Linux actually lets you to do. That previous command that a particular user has run on that, what, on that Linux device. And that command is called what? History. Did you see? History. When you type on history command, it lists what all the commands that have been running from the beginning to the end, it listed to me. So if you say you did not run a particular command, you, that command you can actually be what? That can actually be what be, you know, can be investigated using what this history command, this history, um, what we call the command. But you just type history, it shows you everything that you have run on that server. Now, another trick about history is this. Are you with me? You can see that when I run the command history, it listed every command using from one to what? 40 what? 41. What if I want to pick one of these commands and run? Let's, for example, I want to pick the command in line 33. That is, I want you to what? Change my working directory. And I don't want to copy and paste. You get me? The best way of doing this is just for you to actually do what the exclamation sign and what's the number of that command 33 just type 33 did you see my screen exclamation sign 33 when you type it it gives you that command and it has run that command for you you can see that that line 33 tells me that what i want to change my working directory towards to var slash log and when i run that command using this shortcut at this exclamation mark 33 because it is in line 33 in my history then you can see that what I am, uh, my, my working directory has been changed to what? To um, logs. So if I type history again, remember that here I have from number one to 42, right? If I type history again, what do I have? I have that command in line what? In line 43 and also in line what? In line 33. Am I communicating? Let me type clear command again. Sorry, clear. Another important thing in Linux is that if I don't want to use history, probably I know that, okay, the last command I run, I can I remember the last command is not far away. I can use the arrow sign. Arrow up, arrow down will take you to do what your previous command. Let me use arrow up sign. You can see arrow up shows me that was the last command I ran was what clear, followed by clear, which was the mistake I made, and followed by what history, which was the command I run that listed the history, and followed by what the command I actually used was that was used to change my working directory. So these are some of the tricks that makes Linux what Linux administration an easy what's it called an easy one for you if you get to understand this. Now I want to go back to my home directory. I have just one word cd words tilde. Now let me quickly round up because I am wasting some time on this. Now exit command is basically to log out of your shell. So if I run exit for example now, it will log me out. You see, I'm logged out. I cannot run anything. Now let me connect back to my shell already. Okay, I'm back to my shell. So you can use exit, you can use, you know, control D command to actually, you know, to log out from your shell. I have also shown you what the history command, which actually shows you what a historical list of what previous command. Now, another important thing how do you copy files? How do you move files in the Linux? In Windows, you can press. Control C, 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 you should copy. It doesn't work here. If you press Control C, 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 you are terminating what is on your shelf. Control C is a command that is used to terminate a process that is running on your shelf. That is Control C. So if you want to copy a file, let us list what is in this file now. We have what, ls. Now, another thing is that in this, in this folder, ls does not mean that new file, and text file are the only thing that is in this file, in this folder. There is what we call hidden files, like you know. In your Windows system, you have hidden files in every folder. If I want to see the hidden files in this system, I can use the ls-a command. It gives me what? All the files, including the hidden files. You can see these are hidden files. 
this is a file that is not hidden. This is a file that is not hidden. So every hidden file most times starts with what? With a dot command in front. That is another thing you need to watch. You need to understand the Linux. But if I want this to give me in a long listing format, I press ls dash al and it gives me in a better format. This is what we call long listing format. Okay. Back to how do you copy a file? I have this file, txt, I'm sorry, text file. I want to copy this file, text file. I want to copy it into another location. Let me quickly um, say, okay, I want to copy it into that var slash log location, for example. A best way to copy it is using what? CP, CP means copy, copy which file, text, File, you know, I am I'm, I'm typing txt. I want to use auto completion now. That is that bash completion that I told you about. If I click on tab, it finishes it for me automatically. Now I want to copy this file into another location. I want to copy it to var slash uh, what is called slash log. I also say copy this slash. This is you specify the copy command. This is the source. That is the file that you want to copy. Then you put your what your destination slash log, then slash what? Text what? Text file. Permission denied because what? Because that that particular location as was you call, is not a regular, what's called is a regular location where you can put files. So I want to use the sudo command. I'm going to explain what sudo means to you. Sudo is actually to make you run commands as well as you call, as privileged user. Just like the way you have administrator on Linux. That is, you say run as admin. So sudo is also a command in Linux that you use to run as what as admin. So if I run that same command with sudo, you can see that what I have copied that what I have copied this txt file. I have I'm sorry, I said txt text file to this location. So if I click on ls l here, I will see that what I will see that this file is t here. And if I go to cd slash var slash um, log. And I do ls dash l, I should be able to see my text file there. Did you see the file here? Can you see this file here? So this is a command that is used to what? To copy in what? In Linux. Now, let me say I don't want to copy this file. I want to move this file. I want to move, like, I want to move. But let me say, okay, I want to copy to a location that does not exist. And I want to probably, you know, create like, a, what do you call it? Like the parent directory does not exist. I can see use the same command clear. I can say cd copy this text file to any location. I can, I can say okay dash p maybe uh where are we? We are in home directory. You can say home slash d a a s dash um new folder slash txt file file blah 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 does not exist yes i know hold on txt blah 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 does not exist okay now basically what i'm trying to do here is this now what i'm trying to do here is that this part does not exist this das new folder does not exist so what I'm trying to do is that I want to copy this content that you have. Hey, sorry, I'm using CD, sorry. I want to copy this content, CP, to this folder. And I want this to create this location. I want it to create this, this folder, this new folder, and put this file inside it. So it's telling me that what? This cannot be copied because it's not a word. It's not a regular blah, blah, blah. Then if I use a sudo command now, loose now, OK. Understand this blah 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 regular. Okay, okay. Now let us do something together here. Now, thank you. There is a slide here that says there is a slide here that says teach yourself how to fish. Teach yourself how to fish means that when you are facing difficulty on the Nino server, you don't know what you want to probably run on the command, or you are not sure of a particular command that you want to run on what you call it. Um on the what do you call it? Um, on the on the Linux device, for example, that is, you want to you want to run a command just like the way I'm running a command now. 
and I don't know if okay, if that location that I want but that okay, that um, I want to create that file exists or anything like, and I want to automatically what um I want to use a, what's called a, a, a guide in Linux that gives me opportunity to what opportunity for you to know what that commands mean and what are the other options that you can use. That's what we call man. Man is a quick reference to what to command in Linux. Is a quick reference to command Linux. Now we are going to use this thing, this same thing, and we're going to use man as what as a guide. Now, how do we do this same thing using what using man as a guide? Come back here. If I type, type man cp, man means that you are telling Linux to give you a manual on how to use copy command. That is what it means. Give me a manual on how to use what on how to use copy command. Now I have just click on it. Did you see what it's telling me? It's telling me that CP, this is how a, a man is. A man is always in basically in three folders, in three, what's it called? In three, um, let me say three segments. The first segment is CP. It tells you CP means what to copy files and directory, right? It tells okay, what is the synopsis? That is what's the format in which you use. You say you press the CP command, put any other option that you want, specify what the source and the what and the what and the directory that is the destination that is the DS that you have. So if it is a file, or what is it called, or um, a directory, you can use you know, this CP command to do it. Now, what are the different options that we can use? Now you can use all these options like okay. CPA to have every word copy as an archive. You can use some attributes. You can use you no know, CP dash F to have it to force what do you call it to force a particular location if that destination file cannot be opened. For example, you can use CP that was dash L dash N dash you know dash um, P dash R to have it to recursively. Recursively means that when you have what you call when you have a particular when you have like folders with sub files like different, different sub files. You want to actually copy into this location. You can you want to copy everything in that location. You can use what, you can use this command to do that. Now I am trying to do something and you can see that in what I'm trying to do, that thing does not exist. The command I'm trying to use does not exist. Am I correct? It does not exist because I cannot see the option. If you want to search for something, you can also use this forward slash Maybe I'm trying to search for parent directory here now. You can see that it doesn't exist here now. Good. Now, if you want to use, if you want to exist out of this location, you can use the Q command to exist. What is telling me that since I want to create this folder, I have to probably use another command. And the command I have to use is what? Make directory, MKDIR, and use that dash P that I want. Dash P says that make this directory with the parent directory it does not exist how do i know that it is dash p go back to man again man mkdir what did you see here make directory what do you see you are making a directory you see this is the synopsis that is used the make command and the words specify the directory that you want to what that you want to create and it tells you that what m is actually what probably to set what to set file mode for such a mat for, for, for such a directory that you want to create p is to what is to in no error if exists and also what make the parent directory if it is needed which is actually what i'm supposed to do i want to copy a file to a particular location and you know i want to what to create that what you call it that parent directory if it does not what to does not exist that's what i'm supposed to do and you know you can see v as what verbose and some other things like that that is verbose is just to print an image for you when you are creating that directory now let us go back to our what you call it. You know, I have just used man because man is a guidance in Linux that you can use for anything. If you are convinced, you find yourself lost anywhere. Just type man command, man, and put that command that you want to run. It gives you all the possible options that you can use with such what with such um such command. Now let me type Q to exist because I said if you are using man, these are some parameters of man of man. Use enter to probably enter to a new line use space for a new page use g to go to the top of the page if that is if you are in a man page use capital letter g to go to the bottom and q to what to exist which are some of the things that i've just you know that i've just done now let me now go back and make that directory that i want to make now mkdir dash p 
then I want to make this directory home slash das dash what new what new folder new folder I have just made this directory in this location home slash dash dash new folder so if I want to now copy that file that I said I want to copy this txt file that is this text file I can then say now cp copy my text file to what to home slash dash dash what dash new folder then you can specify the name of the word of the file text file it has been copied now let us go to our home directory and confirm if this file is in this directory now all you have to do is just cd folder you go back to your home directory ls dash l you can see that we have a folder called what a new folder here can you see now you want to check what is in that new folder you can then say okay you want to cd that is you want to check that change that directory to that your new folder so that you can see what is in that directory and also use ls and you can see that what we have what our text file in that what in that location so mad command is something that you can use for when you are lost so that is why i tell you teach yourself how to fish i am happy that you know i am able to know to use a command that you know i'm trying to understand but i don't understand it so i have to what refer to what to manual so that it can guide me on what on how to use this another thing in uh, what you call it in linux is this now if you are finding it difficult to understand some command there are some websites that have actually been created to what to also assist with some of these commands some of this uh, website is what we call explain share let me try and open chrome um if you come here uh, sorry have before you come. go ahead apologies okay. bro sorry okay. yeah so in essence it means that uh while you were trying to create the text file okay in the new folder okay you did not yeah, the, the reason you were not you were unable to do that is because you did not create the uh directory. The, the directory, first. God bless you. That's Before you do right. that, that was the reason. Okay. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank now, you. If I use X, uh, what do you call it? Explain shell now. Explain shell.com is actually a very, very good interface that explains every command that you run on a Linux device for you. So if I come here first, like that command that I spell mkdir mkd ir um, ir dash p if i click on it to explain it explain what that command tells me it tells me that what mkdir is your command that is used to what to make directory and what p is what is that command that is actually used to what to make the parent directory if what if needed which is the same thing that we have in the what in the manual that we have so most times some people do not find it very very easy and convenient to use the ma manual and they use what explain shell towards to solve their problem but i tell you it's a good thing if you are very very good and know if you are well adapted and you know you know how to use a manual another thing that i've been running ls command before i have run ls dash la i have run ls dash lrt i have run ls dash l what if i want to know the other options for ls i can also say man ls and it gives me every option man ls means ls is what list directory abi i use a for example which a says that what show all the files that is don't ignore any what entry started with what dots that is show all hidden files i told you you can use space as well to go to the next page abi if you use the command it tells you to only lot to list the directory itself and not to list the content if you put an l that i'll be using you say what this is long listing abi if you go down, you see R, which is reverse order, that is to sort in reverse. If you see, you see T, which shows what? The last modification time. If you don't know, you know, this is because of, I know where these things are. Say, for example, I find myself, let me type G, for example. And I tell you, G will take you to the beginning of the page. Like I was showing you here. I say G takes you to the what? To the beginning of the page. Now, let me go back here now. And say, for example, I want to probably sort file by size. I don't know the best way to do it. If I come to my manual page, I can just use this forward slash and type size. It tells me if there's anything that talks about size. Now, this is what blah, blah, blah size. Is this what we want? No. This other one talks about size. Is this what I want? No. This one talks about what? This is what I want. Sort by file size. Can you see? So if I go back to my, my home page, 
and run a what is called a command word ls dash capital s is going to sort all the files in that working directory based on their what based on their file size so manual is anything that makes linux administration very very easy if you know how to use a manual you are going to be a very good administrator for a linux device even though it's not all about editing files now let us go back a test queue to exit and what clear my screen let's go back to our presentation slide so i have explained some of these things to you now another thing is you want to delete a file rm is a command okay so i've not explained how to move files yeah move is just the same way you have what in linux you can use move command for two things mv is to move you can use it to move a file from a particular location to another location i can also use it to what to rename a file remember i want to use move for rename scenario here now i am this location i am in pwd you can see that i'm in what i'm in my new folder right and this new folder now i have ls if i find ls i have a text file i want to rename this file from text file to um what's the best name oh let's say test file um or let's say um i don't know a very good name to give. let's say okay let's say change the name to txt file for example if i use mb command mb text file i say you are changing this file from text file to what txt file i have just renamed that file successfully if i put ls you see that that file as what the name of that file has changed from what text file to what to txt file that is a good way of what of using what's it called of using um of using uh what's it called of using um move command now another thing that is here also talks about if you also want to know what are the other options that has to come with move you can also do what man mv and it also shows you a manual of everything that has to do with what that has to do with move command all the command all the options that you can use with what with the move uh, what's it called with the move command let's go back now another thing which is the last one on this screen because we actually have like in the second or third slide and we have a lot to do is rm command rm is just what to remove file delete directory that is what rm does and um i was saying something earlier when you're using the rm command you need to be very very careful because once you delete a file it is done it is gone Windows is not like uh, they, the Linux is not like the Windows where you have like I don't say there's no recycle bin, but before you can recycle, like before you can get a file that is recycled there, you need to actually be advanced to some level. So most times, if you delete a file in Linux, it's gone. If you don't know the best way to recycle those files, so when you are using an RM command, which is a remove file command, you need to be very very careful and be sure of the command that you are using. Now, I want to remove this file. TX. Let me say, okay, let me say I want to create a new file now. Let me say um, I want to VI um, newly. I want to I want to VI now. I want to run this command now. Um, this is a new file I created under new folder. Now I have just created this. I'm actually going to exit that shell now. Control C, Control W, Q, I. Oh. Now, if I do LS, I have two files in this location. I want to remove that TXT file. I want to delete it. The best command is just RM TXT file. It goes, then you press LS. You only have what? Your new file. I just what? I just created. Now, what if I want to delete that directory? I want to delete that directory. With every other thing that is, you know, this is the directory now. Control. Let me let me go back to the home and the parent directory. I said cd dot dot takes you to the what to the parent directory. And if you look at the parent directory, what do we have in parent directory? We have file. We have new file. We have what text file. And you want to delete this new folder it with the content that is inside that new folder. The command that you have to use and you have to be very careful is what is rm dash rf what he's saying is that remove rm means remove r means recursive and f means forcefully let us go to man to understand what i just said man rm that is you want to use a manual for rm you see what do you see that remove files right now let us look for where i have r r is what 
recursively. That is, remove that file and every content recursively. So in that home folder, in that new folder, if I have like three or four subfolders, it will remove everything in that folder. Let me put my G command to take me back to the to the, to the beginning of the manual. You can also see what forceful command here. That is, it will remove it without even prompting you anything. So let us press Q and do that same thing now. RM dash RF. This is a command that you have to be very, very careful of when you're using a Linux device. RM dash RF, new what? New file, new folder. It has deleted that folder and everything inside that folder. Everything inside that folder. So these are some of the you know, basic commands that you use in a Linux device. Another command that I did not talk about is how do you search for words inside a file? Because I can remember, I think there are some assignments that I have to do, some, there's some tasks that I have to do with this. Now, if you remember my cat file, my cat TST file, I have my first line. I have another file, I think new line. Okay, there's nothing in that new file. Now let us add some other lines in that what you call in that text file. VI text file. I want to add some other new lines inside inside this now. I am in my insert mode. Let me see. Um, what should I add to it? Um, okay. The second line starts. Does. Um, I don't know what to type okay just type in something um any suggestion on what to type on this line this is just like four lines of words of words i'm going to save this now now if i cut that file that is by the content of that file you can see what i have just done in that file i can have i have the content of that file now Take, for example, I want to search for, inside that file, I want to search for lines that has the word line. But let me say, let me say, lines that have that particular word line. How do I do it? If you look at this, you can see the first line has this word line, right? The second one has this word line. The third one does not have line. The fourth one has what? Line. How do I search for this? The best way to search for this is just, you can probably use the word command grep. Grep means to what? Search. What are you searching for? I am searching for line in which file? In the word text file. And by the time you say, you're telling okay, grep, that is search for what? Search for this word line in this word, in this folder. I'm sorry, in this file. So if I run this command, I expect that it should give me three lines. So give me this line, this second line. And the what and the fourth line. Let us run that and see what comes out. You see what comes out? The first line, the second line, and the what? And the third line. And on the fourth line. That is the third line is what missing. Now, when I was typing, also, I intentionally added what type here. Type here. So what if I want to search for the word type? That is, I can say that if I am going to search for the word type, I can definitely say what. I can definitely say grep for what? For type in that what? In that text file. And it should definitely give me the what? The third and the fourth line. Do you see it here? This is the third and the fourth line. These are ways you can use to search for what? To search for files in the Linux device. Now, let us use manual for grep also. I want to show you something. This is the manual for grep. What did it say? It says, you can use grep, you can use e-grep, you can use f-grep. It prints line matching a particular pattern. Use the grep with some other options which are specified there, and the particular pattern you are looking for, and in which words, in which line, right? Now, take for example, I want to search for, I told you Linux is case sensitive. I want to search for a particular word, and I don't want it to, I don't want it to use the case, as it should ignore, it should ignore the case of such a character. For example, if I want to look for what which one is case sensitive, let me say case for example. Is there anything? Okay, you see, you can see the I here. Somebody is talking, please. You can see the I option here. I option says what? Ignore what? Ignore case. That is, 
If I put this parameter, it's definitely going to ignore the case for me. Let us go back and do such a, a, a what's it called a search. Now, let me clear my screen. I want to cut that te text file for you. You can see that in this line, we have some what's it called it a capital letter T here. You know, we have small letter T here. We have small letter T here. We have okay. Let me let me edit. Let me do, do some editing on that file. Um. Let me just, I have a new file, VI new file, right? Okay, I want to use new file now. And for this new file that I want to use now, I just want to basically type, um, what should I type? Um, I am, I, I am Nurudin. Some, Call me no routine. However, no routine is a name and should should be written in capital or I should be written in capital for the first letter for the first letter can you see this i said i am nurudin some call me nurudin however nurudin is a name i should be using in capital letter for the first letter because it's a now definitely now let me save that file and you know i want to clear my screen also i want to cut the content of that file that i want to read the content this is the content now i want to search for words that I told you Linux is case sensitive. I want to search for the word Nurudin. If I type grep Nurudin, sorry. Nurudin. Okay, let me do something. Nurudin in what? New file. What should be the response? Can anybody suggest what's going to be the answer? How many, which lines is it going to print out? None. No lines. Yes. Thank you. When you type this, you are going to have no line because no routine does not match that word. Does not is, is a pattern that capital letter N U R U D D E N does not match what any of the patterns in the file. Does not match any line. Now let me do the same thing now. Grab no routine new file. What should be the response now? Anybody? The one that starts with the capital N. One mm. line, line one, one and what? Line one. We should have line one and three. You can see that we have line one and what? Line three, because it has what? Nurudin and it starts with what? Capital N. What if I now put this command now? I put search for Nurudin case insensitive. What is it going to bring? Because we know I means that you ignore the case, right? Like mm, I showed you in the lines. manual. It gives us what? The three, three lines. lines. God bless you. Now, and I now want to do another thing now. What if I say, okay, give me this. What's going to be the response? It will show the three lines. three lines. God bless you. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So because you are telling just what? Ignore the case. So that is basically what some of the good ways you can actually use what you can actually use grep in what in Linux. Another thing that is not in this one, I tell you Linux is a lot. It's not something you can easily cover within one or two days. Another thing you can do in Linux is that you can, there's what we call, I'm just going to touch it. There's what we call standard output, standard error, and um, standard input. And, um, Basically, because I have some of these things in your assignment, and basically what it does is that when you run a command, take for example, we want to run um, clear, for example, sorry, I have captures already. Take for example, I want to run this command now. Hmm? And I want the output of this file, I want it to be written to a particular folder, um, a particular file, for example. 
I don't want it to probably, I don't want to, I don't want it to be written on that file. I don't want it to be on my screen. It's an output of your command, right? You know, if I run it, you should actually give me this, right? But I don't, I just want it to go to another file. I can use the arrow sign and say, okay, put it to what? No rule file or no regime file. Did you see? That same command, the output of such command has been what? Has been redirected to another file called what? No file. Now, where is this new file? This new file is definitely going to be in what? The same working directory where we are because we did not specify that what? It should go to another directory. So if I press ls command, you can see that no file is in what? Is in the same, that same working directory. And if you cut no file, you can see that what? It has the same answer as what we have here. Are you with me? Another thing is that if I want to probably run another command, for example, let me say I want to run this one now, um, Nuruddin, and I want it to not, not just direct that file into, not just redirect the output into Nuru file, but I want it to append. That is, I want it to add the result of this new command to what is already existing in Nuru file. Use with this word, this double word, double arrow sign, that is arrow that's greater than sign, use it word to append. By the time you run this command, it will, what, it will append what is in this, the output of this command, it will append it to what is here before. So if I'm going to cut, if I say I want to read new file now, that is the reading file, I should have like five lines of character here, which is what? This is what was there before, right? And these are now the what? The three lines that was, that is the output of this command. So these are just what? Some of the, you know, simple um, cases of what? Of using, um, uh, what's it called of um, using Linux? So I think um, there is no time. Let me quickly finish because I can hear a question to reach out to me. Okay, I guess we are enjoying it. Okay, oh my god. Okay, let me quickly take us through this. Hello, no, um, yes, let's be rounding up. Yeah, let's sure, be rounding sure, up sure, so sure. that we can it. continue on Wednesday. All right, okay. okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, five structure directory or five system stem directory structure. So in Linux, like I told you, I told you that, you know, uh, it's not like Windows and um, every, what's it called? Every, um, how should I put it? Every, um, every system has like, a, or every file system has like a structure. Let me say everything you saw in Linux have like a directory structure that is follows. The first one, not these are not all that we have in Linux system. But these are some of the most common ones that people usually go to and one or run one or two things. The first one is what you call the root directory. The root directory is basically just a forward slash. And if you notice, every single file or every directory in the Linux system must start from the root directory. You will notice that all the commands that have been running here, if I press the PWD, it will only start with forward slash because everything must start with forward slash. So if I want to go to the root directory, I can say cd forward slash. It takes me to the root directory. If I say pwd, it tells me that what I'm in the root directory. What are the content of the root directory? ls, it tells me that, okay, this is all the file system that you are seeing on this screen. They are in the root directory. Because anything in Linux, anything must start from what? From the root directory, which is everything you have there, bin, dev, etc, blah, blah, blah. This is everything you have there. So in Linux, your source of truth or the primary hierarchy root is always what? The root direction. Another one that we have is what we call the bin direction. That's forward slash bin. In this place, we have what we call executable files. And basically, they are used to run what? Lots of like processes, like probably um, in this place, you have commands like ping, all this grep, all this CP, copy command, move command. This is where you find all these what? All these commands that we have, and like they're able to execute some of these commands, all these cat command, ls that I've been talking about, cp. This is where those what? These binaries, I said, uh, these binaries are actually are, are, are stored. That is the binaries of this command. Then another one is what we call the dash dev, that's forward slash dev. This in a Linux system, whenever you have any hardware attached to your system, the device file of that hardware is always be, is always found is what? In your forward slash dev command. I just wanted to note this is not as it probably starts working or something like that. But an important one that you work on is what is the fourth one, which is what etc. Forward slash etc 
is where you find every configuration file on a Linux system. Every OS specific system wide configuration file. You find them in. So anything, if you are installing any, any application or any, any package, let me put it that way, on a Linux device, the configuration file will definitely be in what your ETC what your ETC um location. Now, another one is what we call the what the lib lib. This place basically contain what we call the you know the shared um library files and um, you know um it's just like an essential for what we call it for binaries in all these what we call all these bin and what and then um, s bin that we have above. Then we have what we call boot. Boot contains files for your words for your system boot. That's where your system is coming up. Uh, we have home directory, which is just a user home directory that I've been showing you since morning. User home directory, blah 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 blah. Uh, we have MNT is just like a temporary mount point that you can use for what while you are replying a file system. We have PROC that contain what that contain processes that are marked as file for what uh, that are marked as file by process number. I'm actually going to talk about processes in Linux. I want to round up quickly. Uh, we have temp folder. We have USR, we have VAR. For VAR, basically, when you're looking for logs in Linux, you definitely find your logs in what? In VAR. And because that's what we call, that's, it's got the name because of what files that are in this location are variable length. That's why we have them called what? VAR. And we have folder also called SBIN, which actually contain binaries used by what? For system what? For system administration. That is probably you want to do some repair, you want to work on your digs and other things like that. These are what? These are some of the words. Um, this is the location where you can you know use some of the binary files stored in this location. Now, at the right of my screen, you can see uh what's it called a basic uh, output of what you call it, the output of an ls-l command. And on this screen, I said I was going to explain when whenever you run ls-l command. Let me go back to my tilde, my home directory, ls-l. This was what I was telling you. I'm going to explain to you that I was okay, I'll explain what this means. What that means, what this means, what that means, and I want you to listen carefully because your ability to interpret this and ability to give right permission to files in Linux is important and very, very necessary. It is very, very, very important. So I want you to listen carefully to me. Now, the first thing is that when you are this, I want you to look at this screen. When you have this output of your LS that share, that is the long listing of your of the contents of that directory, the first letter at the word left talks about the file type and most times we usually see it as d or probably a dash when you have as d that means it's what it's a directory i see the dash that means it's just what an ordinary file come back here when i put ls dash earlier you see that what everything that here is what is the first letter here is what is a dash right now if i create a what a directory now mkdi i'll make directory new directory and i run clear and i run ls sorry ls dash l you can see that what for the directory i have created you can see that it starts with what a d which is telling you that what it is a what it is a directory then the next three what is it called the next three um what you call that follows the next three characters that follows talks about the permission of that file permission is divided into three for every file. I want you to listen because it's part of the tax I've given you as your homework. The first permission is what we call the user permission. The second permission is called the group permission. And the third permission is called others or everyone, or some people call it the world. Now, permission in Linux is just three types. We have what we call read permission. That's R that you can see on this screen. We have what we call W, which is write permission. And we have what we call X, which is what? Execute permission. RWX is always the format. RWX. So if you can look at this screen, the first permission that you see, that is the first three dashes that you see is always the what? The permission of the owner. That is the user permission. The next three dashes that you can see is what? Is the group permission. And the last three dashes will definitely be the what? The others. So in the top of my screen at the right, that is the top right, you will see that first of all, the first three we have RWX, that is the owner of this file as what? Read, write, and executable permission. The next one is what we call RW dash. That is to tell you that the group of that file, 
the group permission is just what read write. That is, if such a file is an executable, that group cannot what cannot execute. That is, member of that group cannot execute what cannot execute that file. How do you know member of the um, the what's called the group and what and the owner of the file? I will show you later. Another one is the last one, which is others. That is, people that are not what they are not group. Um, they are not the owner of the file and they are not part of the group of the file. You can see that in this space, they only have what read permission and. Another thing is these permissions have what we call numbers that are assigned to them. That is another important thing that you need to know. There are numbers that are assigned to what permission in Linux. And we have what we call 421. Four is for read permission. Two is for um, two is for write permission. One is for executable. So if you want to give what does it call it? If you want to give a file a permission of 777, seven means you have four plus two plus one. That is, that file is going to have seven, that is read permission, write permission, which is two, executable permission, which is what? Which is one. In such a case now, if you are given 777, that means the first part you are giving the owner the three permission, the second one, which is the group, you are giving the group the three permission, which is the read write access. And last one, the others you are giving them was those three permission, which is also what read write execute. In this screen that we have now, on this my screen, if I am, if you ask me now, what is the permission that is given to this? What is it called? It on the right, that is on the top right that you can see. I will tell you that this permission, I told you it is four, two, one. So that means you can see that if you, for the owner of this part, for, for the owner of this um, file, that is that, that screen that you are seeing at the top right, you will see that it is seven because read is four, write is two, executable is one, that is seven. The next one is six because read is four, write is two, that is six. And the last one is what? Is four. So the permission on this file is just going to be what? Seven, six, four. 764. That is a code. I'm going to tell you how to use this thing later. Now, another thing also here is also, let us go back to the bottom. That is, you can see my cursor is also what we call the number of add links. I will think about add links. I don't think I'll be something that you need to know for now. But like I was saying before, I said, how do you know the owner and the group of the file? The owner of the file is always the first one that comes here. You can see the owner of this file is Sean. And the group where that file belongs to is what? Is staff that these files belong to. The, fourth, the column that follows shows the size of the file. The next column that follows shows the what? The last modified time or date of that file and date of that file. And the last thing, the last column is what? Defining. So if you come to my screen back now, you can see that for this first file, it's a directory. You can see that the owner of this file has Read write permission, which is read write executive permission, which is what seven. The group has read write executive permission, which is also what seven. And others have what read and execute, which is five. This is seven seven five. That is what that is the permission on this file. Now you can see that this file also belongs to the user DAS and the group DAS. Are you with me? This file has a size of what? This folder has a size of what? 6 MB. This is the last date of the modified of that of, of this folder and or last date of created, which was the last time it was created. And this is what? This is the name of the file. Now, how do you change permission on the file? There are different ways that I change permission. And a simple command that people use is what we call C mode, C H M O D. If you don't know how to use this permission, if you don't know how to use this um, this permission, just use your manual. Like I need to tell you, it's a good guide. She mode. What does it say? Is change what file mode bits. Do you see? And the option is just she mode. Put the options and specify what the files. And it has talked about a lot of things here now. Now, let us go back to one of these files now. Another one is that how do you also change the ownership of your file? The ownership of a file use C H O N W um, C H O W N C own change owner. If you don't know how to use it, also come to what manual. It tells you what change file ownership and group. Let us do an example. I'm going to be fast. Sorry, I want to be fast. 
um, let me say I want to change uh, this txt file now, or let me say new file now. I want to change the owner. So I want to change the owner. I says she own. I want to change the owner of that file. I want to change it to team agile, for example. I want to change the group to cloud user, for example. Cloud user. And which file do I want to work on? Um, Nurudin file, right? Operational permitted. Let me put sudo there, sorry. Sudo. Okay. If I press ls l, you see that the owner of the ownership of this file has changed. Did you see that it's different now? Can you see that this, this file now belongs to what? Team Agile, and it's now a member of what? Cloud user group. If I also want to change the permission of that file, this file presently has what? This is 665. If I want to change it to 777, I want to change, I want to give everybody read write access permission and execute. I can say what? G mode 777 Nurudin file. So you just for sudo command, I know. I have just done it by press ls dash l. You can see that what everybody here has what read write access and what executable for this what for this particular file. So this is an example of how to this is just an explanation of what a file system or a file in C Linux and what they explain the different columns that we have. Let me quickly round up. Sorry. Um okay, user management. Oh my god. Okay, this is an important thing. I'm going to try my best to quickly create it. I said something here. If you look at my screen, I said, all you need in user management in Linux is just three commands. User add, user mode, user del. If you are creating a user. And if you are creating a group, group add, group mode, group del. These three commands, you are good to go. If you have these three commands. What does user add do? User add or group add is used to what? To add a new user, that's a new local user. User mode is to change what? Is to change the attribute of a user. Group mode is to change the attribute of a group. And user del at the same time, or group del is to delete a group and to delete a user. Let us quickly do an analysis and quickly run through this. I'm sorry, Dapo. Um, let me create a user, user add um, sudo, user add, um, let me look for somebody's name, Luke, okay? I just created a, a user called Luke. Now, how do I know the location of this user? How do I know, okay, this user that I just, I just created the user, I did not create home directory or anything for this user. And in Linux, you have to, it's always good when you create, if it's a, it's always good when you create an home directory for a user because one thing about the home directory is that it also helps you to know maybe that user probably wants to create a service account or a normal account. So that some users that you have, they don't have interactive login shell. I think it's part of the assignment and I want you to also research on that. Now, user add, I've created user look. How do I know that look is a user on this system? A best way to know all the users that you have in your system is to go to this location. You want to cut etcdpassword. Cut etcd password, etc password, I said etcd, sorry. Password, it shows you all the user in this system. You can see in this system, we have a user Luke, you have a user Yofi, you have a user T, you have a user James, and they're all going to what? Being that bash. That's the straight that what this user has been created, clear. Now, another way you can also use, you can also use ID James. ID James give you the user attributes in a Linux device. You can see that this user has the user ID of what? 1006. The group actual ID is what? 1009. And what other groups is what? 1009. Now, let me explain three things to you here now. The first one is, what is a user ID? How is a user ID assigned to a user in Linux? A user ID in Linux, every user ID that is created starts with one except for system users and root user. The default user ID for a root user is always zero. Let us go back to the Etsy password that we read before. If you see root, you will see that the user ID for root is what? Is zero. Every other user that you create on this system will start with one. You can see that we start with 1,000, sorry. You can see that I can create it from here. 1,000, I have, what, then what do you call it? EC2 user, 1,000, team agile, team cloud, everybody goes like that. They start following that same sequence like that. 
This is 106, 107, 1008, 1009, which is the last word, which is the last user. Clear. That is how to create a user. Now, what are the other attributes that has to create a come with a user? If you want to create a user with home directory, you used to use user add dash m. How do I know that is dash m command? The best way is to always use your words, your manual. I'm telling you to, I'm always referring manual to you because it will help you especially in some of the assignments or the tasks that you have. It says what? User add is to create a new user and update what? Default username. Now, let us go and search for home. You see what? You can see a lot of things that have to home uh, that has to do with home here. Yeah? Okay, you see it creates what M. So create what? So create the home directory. That is, it create the user home directory if it does not work, if it does not exist. Now, if I want to delete that user that I've created, sudo uh what's it called? Okay, before I create the delete the user, I told you can, can use also use what a uh, user mode. I used to change some of the attributes of that user. Now, if you go back to here now, I I I typed ID look. I said look is as this user ID 1009 is a member of, or what do you call it? Is a, um, is a primary member of this group and a secondary member of all these groups, the same group. Now there's all called primary group and other groups in Linux. Now there's, when you want to know, okay, this part, uh, how do you know that this, part, this particular person is a primary member? A primary member, to make a, a primary member when type user at the person that comes in here, is always the primary group. The others are always what, um, other group. Now I want to give, user I, I want to edit attributes of what you call it of look i want to make look a primary member of let me say um admin i think for example i also want to what to add look to other group like let me say team agile or and team kubernetes for example at the same time i want to use user mode command let us use user mode to assist us with this task if you want user mode command let me say man user mode for example man user mode tells you that what now the first thing I want to do, I want to probably add to group. Let me see anything that has to do with group here. It says what group? This is the group that I, I have here now. It says you have, can actually use capital letter G and small letter G. Abi and capital letter G asks to what a list of other group, which is the other group I'm talking about. And then um, small letter G is what you are asked to do with what the what the primary group of that user. Now, how do I also you can also use that user mode. So also what probably set an expiration date for that account that you can see if i give on e and i specify that this account should expire using this date format such an account for example in your organization probably you have an external person or an external auditor that want to work on your system probably for one or two days you can create a user account for that person give expiration expiration to such an account just for a short period of time now this is just an example this is just like a guide from what you call it from the manual now let me go back and probably just add this guy um sudo user mode um dash g i want to add look to a particular group how do i even know the group that exists you people didn't know how to name. now a better way to know the group that exists is what what cat etc slash groups have a group these are all the groups that exist this is the command that i run etc group if you want to know the part the users, you share etc p a s s w d. You want to know group etc what groups, and you can see that what these are different groups. Imagine team cloud, scrum user, etc blah 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 team yofi. So I want this guy to be a primary member of what of um cloud user and also a member of let me say team Kubernetes and team Docker. Now let us clear our screen and do the same thing now. Clear. You now want to say sudo user mode. You want him to be a primary member of what cloud user at cloud cloud user who is the guy you want to give permission look right i have just done that now at this same look i want to i want him to be a member of what you call the other group that's also what uh, let me say um team agile and team kubernetes right i'm just trying to be fast team agile this guy actually do this with one command but i want it to be simple for you all right well, that's why i'm doing it one after the other I'm adding him to Team Agile, and I also want to add him to Team Kubernetes, for example. This is Team Kubernetes. Now, if you run the command um, id look, for example, you will see that this attribute has changed. You can see that what for look now, the primary group of what of look is now cloud user and is a member of other group as well, like what team, I was call it team Kubernetes that you can see what that you can see here. You get me? So these are some of the words some of the attributes that you have. Now, 
let me clear my screen also um so i want to delete the user look for example now you can also use your user dell to go to delete his account user dell i'm very very fast sorry user dell look look is not removed because it's not the primary member of blah 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 okay now it's telling me that now the group look are you with me the group look not removed because it is not primary group of what user look that is it's actually it's telling me that look is actually assigned to a primary group and so because of it's not a primary member of his main group itself which is look that is why i cannot delete it so if i want to delete this guy now i have to add him back to that look group and so that i can be able to what what run my user um dell command so i can actually do that but because of time i don't want to run on that so let me go back to um my okay i've used this also i have probably shown you how to use id command now how do you create a user password to create a user password you just need to run password p a s s w d you want to give luke a password password luke only roots oh sorry i used i need to use sudo command sorry sudo password roots it tells you that what have i deleted this guy sorry you cd um cat slash etcd password okay okay look has been deleted i guess yeah it has been deleted it's normal part of it so now let me say i want to probably let me look for somebody in this team uh let me say james for example now clear uh i want to change password of password james i want to use sudo command to give me what is it called a permission of the password password james i want to give me a password it says you are changing james password now which is a user i want him to just have a password when we are changing password now the attributes of password also they are like different parameters like uh, what is it called uh maximum of what eight to twelve param to twelve characters with capital letters small letter and special characters so if i put a password now i want to put the password for for this guy so password has been saved automatically so i have just basically changed that password of that user now how can you also uh, well, probably change password parameters there's a command that is also called c change ch basically that command does is just what to change password expiration and some other information about what about that what you call it about that um that user so if you want to use man also i tell you always try to use man it's always a good one for you it's a good one for you this is what ch is what is used to what is used to change what user password what user password um information password expiration information and that, that thing like that now um you can actually if i run for example go back comma sorry control c c um james right um sudo sorry sudo 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 now it's telling me that what i have just i want to change what you call it i want to change what you call the password uh what's called the password expiry details for this guy is asking me for some details it's asking me to specify the minimum password is i'm going to leave it as default if i want this guy to always change this password every 30 days i can just put 30 there and what it tells me that okay well, this guy password is going to what password is going to have like 30 days maximum but default by default you have 999 in what in a minus what's it called in a minus device like this it tells you that what that password is going to be there for a, like for a long um period of um of time so it's telling me now that you know um i specified the minimum i specified the maximum then i'm going to leave this as default then it's asking me that okay if that user is going to is that if that user password is going to expire what is going to be the warning how many days warning is i want to give it by default linux gives you like seven days warning so i can say okay start giving this person five days warning and you know this particular person can also what can also start getting information from what five days before the password would expire so these are some of the things that you can actually use to what to modify um users you know um password um, information so you can use man for a lot of things you have to reference it i'm trying to rush yes i've talked about etc password to where you store your user account information now where are passwords being stored in linux password are stored in ashes in ashes and then uh, what i mean by in ashes is that it can actually be in like h256 h512 okay i think these are complex words but if you want to know your location for your password, you are never going to see that password with your, your clean eyes. I just changed the password for a user, James, now. So if I go to my directory, um, cat, cat, 
etc sorry etc shadow this is sudo now sudo now sudo 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 this is the location for the password for every user and this is james now this symbol dollar sign six is actually means that what is the id that is the, the algorithm id and this is what sha 512 it is telling you that that is what that is the um the sha for that password um this uh, was it called this is the password of the user which is which is stored in ashes that uh, you can see here this is the password of the user this is the 30 days that i, that I explained that okay the user should have a um, maximum of 30 days as for uh, as the user password that is the expiration of the per user password and what is it called this is also what the what the number of warning days that i also do what that i also explained earlier that okay oh, this is user warning days and this same information that you have here you can also get this same information using that ch command that is ch dash l james is going to give you this information better and well explained here you can see this information that was showing you here now this is this information that you have here this was what i explained before maximum number of days between password change number of days for one year password expired and some other things like that um so that is for um password and um yes you will notice that i've been having challenges with sudo and you know i've not been using my sudo now in linux there are, for every user there are some commands that you are limited to running and um you know before you can run this command you need to run this command as privilege user that is when sudo comes in sudo allows you to run a command as a privilege user and it is because of the fact that i have not given my account the permission to run as privilege user that is why i'm facing this what this challenge of you know having to run sudo all the time now if you want to change from one user to another user you can also use what the su to change from one user to another user Take for example now, I want to change to um user, what is it called? User James, for example. Now, this is James, he's asking me for James password. Do I even remember the password I put here? Okay, I remember the password. You can see that's what I have now logged into James' account. I am no more in my own account, which is that account. I am now in James' account because you can see this is James, and this is the username, and this is the IP. So if I click PWD now, it takes me to what because James does not have working directory when I created this account, it takes me to what that's what that's home directory if i had created james account the home directory it will have taken me automatically to what james working directory so now i am now in james account no my account so if i want to leave james account i can just quickly run the what run the exit command and it's what it takes me out of what takes me out of james account so that is a better way of using what you know um some of um user administrator um commands in what user management commands in linux then finally if I want to make sure that all these commands have been running, that's asking me for sudo, sudo, sudo. I don't want it to give me sudo. I want it to just grant me permission. You can do that by using what we call vi sudo, or probably open this location, etsy sudo location, and grant permission. This is a simple, uh, what's it called? A simple way of what, what that looks like. If I run sudo vi sudo, for example, you can see this location, it tells you that what? It tells you different things that you can do in this. You can see that for your account, you can see that this allow people in wheel group. Wheel group is more like like a default group that is created in what's it called in Linux that have permission to run what to run all commands, all commands. Now you can see here that what this line you can see that wheel group has permission to run all commands. This second line I'm telling that what I have a thing that is called that thing. I want that thing to what. To run all commands as sudo without asking for what without asking for password you get me so these are some of the things that you can do with your what your vi sudo and um, it's also one of your tasks you can also give you know um what's it called you can see here that what allow routes to run all commands anywhere you can see root all on that is that root can run any command anywhere that you want it to what to run um such um command so you can also specify some different different parameters like this now if you look at this now you can say allow members of group to mount what or on on or on mount cd roms so and this is what this is the format if you want to probably um you know mount and on mount what cd rom so you can also give specific commands for what for different users so vi sudo is the or probably etc sudo is the location where you can grant permissions sudo permissions or commands to what different accounts and it's also part of the what 
the tax I gave you as what well, as assignment. So I'm going to leave here without saving anything because I didn't admit edit anything. This is a configuration file, an example of a configuration file. And I'm going to leave here without saving anything because I didn't I did not edit. So I'm going to leave the dashboard, the what was the interface. You see what did it tell me? Sudo what on change because I didn't what I didn't do anything. Now um another slide is what we call the Linux process. Linux processes are just, you know, uh, let me say for every command that you run, or probably what you are doing, you are basically running a process. I don't know, Yes, I think we would have to, you can just round up in like Yes, yes, this two is just minutes. like, yeah, yeah, this is not like last two slides. Thank All you. Right. Um, Linux process is just like what we call, like I said, everything you run in a Linux device, you have, um, you know, it's a process. And these are basic commands that you can actually use for what to list Linux process. Now, for a Linux process, when you write, run this command like ps command, you can use a manual also. A manual will also help you run man ps. It gives you options, a snapshot of the current process, and you can see different options p that ps dash e ps dash ef ps aux psx, and it gives you what the meaning of different words, what it means. You have it here. Now, when you run this command now, control uh, what's it called q ps dash if, for example, if you run this command, and let me scroll up on this command, you will see different things, different columns, and these columns as what you call it, different minutes. The first one that you see here is the user ID. That is, who is the person that is running that process at the moment? That is what UID means, user ID. The next one is PID. That is the process ID. It gives you the process ID. You can see different process ID. The next one is parent process ID, which is what, like, okay, What's the process? Because there are some process that you know they have like you know sub process that has to run under them. If you use this command like ps3, for example, uh, I don't have it here. Okay, you can actually yes, you use like ps3. It shows you like in such a format that you want it to um to show you. Okay, yeah, forest. That is ps dash is dash dash forest. Um, just a minute. Um, ps dash e dash dash forest. You can see that, look at this process. This is SSHG. This is the parent process. This parent process has a sub, a, a what you call it, a child process that are running. This is what, this is an example of what, an example of what, you know, processes that has what, um, child process and parent process. So this is going to be um, an example of what I want to show you. Now, let me go back to my screen also. I was explaining something to you here. And then um, C is just what, the CPU utilization in percentage. Um, S, S time means the start time of that process. C means the terminal, um, the terminal line number. T is the time that is the time that process has actually take to run for some time. And then CMD is just the command that you actually run for that process to what to initialize. That is uh, what this means. And in Linux also, like I told you, I told you control C is just what is just to kill any process. So if you are running control C, you think you are copying, you are not copying anything, you are killing a process. Um, you can run commands in foreground and background. So these are some of the words, some of the ways you can actually run um, commands. Like if you run a particular command and put like a what's called an appersand sign, you run such a command in the background. You can also kill commands and there are different words. There are different kill signals that we have in what in um, in Linux. If you want to know your kill signal that you have in Linux, you can run the Q-L command. That is Q list. It gives you all the list of the Q signals. And one of the top Q signals that we use in Linux is what we call Q term and what and um I'm sorry, side term and side Q. That is your um, your signal nine and signal 15, as you can see on this. I was called on this screen. So I will I, I will be grateful if you can also you know explore further using your what your manual for some of these things. Finally, software management in Linux. I know it's a lot, you may have been tired, but it's not easy. Now for software management in Linux, we have what we call a package manager, we have a package type. A package manager basically is just, you know, or what we have like um, like YUM, for example, YUM is the package manager. YUM basically means yellow dog um, update uh, modifier. That is what uh, modified, sorry, that is what YUM means. Um, APT is just, you know, that we use APT most times for what? Um, Debian distros, like when you have Ubuntu, Linux Mint, like I told you, which are different flavors of Linux, with APT, which is advanced packaging too. And then um, RPM is basically like, well, let me say, YUM is what they call it, is a package manager that's based on RPM. And RPM is more like a package itself. I call it package. So we, can, we have RPM distro and we have what we call 
the Debian and the Debian um, distro. So these are some of the commands that you can actually use on a Linux device to run and um, to update and we use, you know, probably to update or install different um, packages on your Linux, um, on your Linux um, OS. So I think um, that will be all for now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, I know it's a lot. Yeah, and I expect some questions. Yeah, thank you. Okay, can I talk about the assignments? Okay, okay, okay. Let me quickly show assignment. Um, just a minute. Um, just a minute. Um, just a minute. Oh, I think. Okay, this is the assignment. If you can see this screen, can you see the screen? Okay, for different teams, you have your assignment. We have a server that is provisioned for you. For you to log on to the server, you just need to run this command for different teams. And the first team, which is Team Docker here, we have a task that you have to change the owner of a particular directory. This directory exists so that the ta that particular uh, what is it called that particular directory, the user is not that that directory is, as a user tire and is owned by a group called developer and make sure that these changes is applied recursively to all the content in the folder that is if this user also does not exist or this group please try to create this group then there's also another file that is called docker.cicdpng that's a p is an image of cicd uh what's it called a cicd um pipeline and i'm telling you that I want you to change the permission of this particular file so that the reader has words read, write, access, and execute. The group has words read, write, execute, and the word, which is everybody, has no permission on that file. Then there's another one that also has to do with what using ACL to what adding ACL to what this particular file, and you just granting this user new. If this user does not exist, please create this user. And I'm more interested in this tax number four. Because I didn't talk about it, so I'm more interested in this example. And I want to see how well you can do it. Um, for Team Cloud, for Team Cloud, you also need to log on to the server using this. I'm going to share you these private keys. For every team has a private key that you can actually use. So I advise you, if you want to do this, you can all sit down together. Maybe someone share the screen, and you can all you know collaborate and interact on how to work and on how to work on this. So um, for this task, you have to create a user called John Doe. Give this user this password. Let this user as a default shell to be what? The con shell, which is the k shell I talked about. Let the user be a primary group of a primary group member of what? Cloud user and create this cloud user. It does not exist. You can see that cloud user already exists already. I've created in all your servers, so it's not a problem. Then I also said modify the user account so that the user has to change the password on first login. You know, this is the user password. So if that pass, if that user is going to log in for the first time, I want that user to be able to change the password. That is one. And then another thing is I add that user also, that user John, to another group that is called what? Local admin group. While that user is this still keeping this what? Still keeping this primary group cloud user. So that is it. So you can create this group if it does not exist also. Um, Team Agile also is also for user management. I want you to create change the password of James. I just did something like that for you. So you are good to go, I feel good. Change the password of James to this. Create a new, what's it called? A new um, new local group called DevOps Engineer. If it does not exist, delete and create. Um, if it already exists, please delete and create. Then let us know that it is deleted and created one. And I said, leaving the primary group as it is, add James, T, and Yofi. These are different users. Add them to an existing group called what? cloud user, then using the appropriate pseudo, config, pseudo configuration, permit this user T to be able to run any command without being prompted what? Without being prompted password. That is to be able to run any command on you as pseudo, just like you are using pseudo this is money. I want that person to be able to run that command without being prompted password. Then finally for team Kubernetes, um, you're also logging with this using this credential. I'm going to share all this, uh, this private key with you at this assignment. I want you to extract look at this file there's a file in this location i want you to extract 
any line in that file that has this content, that has this string, this particular string, and writes that file, that, that output to this location, that is one. Then I also want you to extract in this file, this is message logs, any line that I started that ends with registered, that ends with registered, ends new, ends with registered, and write them to this location. Then finally, for that same team also, um, I also wanted to extract from this same file also any line that has these strings SM boots and append them to what to this file. So if this file does not exist, please create this file. But I'm sure some of these, you know, some of these um files exist. So that is just the assignment um in brief. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, well, um, someone said that Mr. Nudin has literally fried our bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that this is, is a Linus. lot. That yeah, is yeah, that is Linus okay. Way. Um, all right, so thank you so much, um, Nudin, for this teaching on not so basic, right? Because you've actually moved from basic to inter intermediate, you know, intermediate Linux administration. So thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed the teaching. And I guess um, we have so many people on the call as well that also enjoyed the teaching. So well, as usual, the material for this teaching has been posted within the resource page on Discord. So you're expected to work as a team on the different tasks, you know, just like it showed you. So kindly go through the assignments, which will be presented next weekend, right? So this recording will be available on our YouTube page as usual. So once again, no, we didn't. Thanks a lot. You know, no, it was someone that I think lent Linux under one month. I can't, I can't forget that period. You know, when he was working in my unit, and I had to tax him, guy, you need to start learning Linux. And you know, within a month, like this guy literally broke, he broke that record. You know, within one month, he lent Linux, and at that point, I was even, I was even scared. Like I was, I was afraid oh. that. I, I, Hello. Yeah, so at that point I was I was scared. Uh, that, uh, that <laughs> I was I was scared, you know. I was scared. I how you know I've been I've been doing Linux for I think almost five or six years now. But this guy just came within one month, he learned Linux and he just come with challenges and <laughs> I thought I would even be scared that what if I don't have a response for this guy? Do you understand? So it was part of those guys that actually put us on our toes, you know, to be able to learn more. So I wasn't really surprised when he was um, taking the class, really. So thank you so much again, Nurodin. So um, now, um, quick, quick announcements. I know that some of us have questions. So quick announcements. We're going to be having a general Discord rep right, um, a general Discord rep that will be in charge of making sure that uh, there are no blockers from any team, right? So it would also liaise with other team reps to make sure that our weekly presentations you know, go on smoothly. So it's like your voice out there to um, communicate feedback to the founders and, and the faculty leaders. So if you have any questions or concerns, Please, all reps are encouraged to reach out to him. You would also be reaching out to the um, team reps as well, you know, just to find out if you have any blockers or um, people that will not be present in the meeting, right? So um, they can all reach out to him as well. So his name on his name on Discord is um, let me see. Uh, Sorry, Lawrence, what is your name on Discord again? Love for Top. Yeah, Love for Top. So mm. Love for Top, that's his that's his Discord name on on this um that's his profile name on Discord. So please, if you have any challenges whatsoever, or if you are not going to be present for a particular presentation or any of our lectures, please kindly reach out to him. And the reason why we said that is in the coming in this in this new week. We're going to be pruning out people. We'll be removing people that have never contributed to the team because 
we are taking records of that. We'll be removing people because, of course, we can't be mentoring people that are not reaching out. We can't be mentoring people that are not, you know, putting in efforts into all of this, right? We can't be mentoring people that are not willing to be mentored. So we're going to be, we ought to have done that since yesterday, but I just solicited with the founders that they should just still give another one week, you know, so that um, um, we can be able to, you know, see people that are actually serious on this platform. So that will be done um, this week. So again, Love for Top is our general Discord rep. You can always reach out to him if you have concerns, right? And um, it would also be meeting with the reps as well. So it's it's more like your it's more like your SUG president out there, you know, um, um, you know, bringing back concerns, you know, back to the founders and faculty leaders. So thank you, Nurudin. I know. It's not possible for us to um, digest everything that we have learned today. Right? So that's why you need to go back, um, rewatch the video. The video is going to be available after, after the class today on our YouTube page. So if you've not subscribed on our YouTube page, kindly do that now. Just go to YouTube and search for dwas.ng. That's .ng, subscribe. We watch the video again because you notice that when Nurian was talking, he talked about practice and you know based on um, based on his years of practice, that is how you know he's able to pass the information you know um, in a seamless manner. So watch the videos, practice, 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 like always practice. You know um, every now and then. Do you understand? Also yeah, practice uh, as a that group. That for um, yes. Yeah, I actually skipped that because, uh, like I said, it's a lot. And um, I wanted to share with you a website where you can practice Linux very well and you become very, very, you know, convenient in the use of Linux. And um, the website is basically um, Killer Coda. On Killer Coda, if you can see my screen, this is killercoda.com. You have what we call different, uh, what we call different playgrounds, and you click on Linux by Pavel Pivos. And when you click on Linux by Pavel Pivot, it tells you to log in. I have an account with them because I use the playground for a lot of things before. Once you log in, it gives you different segments in Linux. You see, this is a tax on or a lesson on listing of files, List, a, a lesson on working on directories, a lesson on copying of files, a working on working with users, working with stream, working with logs, PS command. Take, for example, if I click on, you know, um, let me say I want to click on move or copy files. Now, once I click on it, it gives me a guide on, you know, it tells me start, it explains to me, okay, this is what you do. This is the command that you run. This is what you do. It explains everything to you. So I will advise you that you, know, you can try to use website like this as it will support you a lot and also help to, you know, um, assist your, what's it called, your understanding of it. Because Linux is not something you can finish in one day. It's not something that takes just one, two days to finish your two classes. Your personal development and personal time of studying is also going to go a long way to assist you. So that is what I have to say on that. Thank you, Dapo. All right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Nudin. So you can also drop the link on, on our resource um, page on Discord. Yes, we'll post it. Please post the links. Yes, we'll, we'll post it on the um, resource group then someone is uh, how do we get a group assignment yes i also post the assignment on our um, devops resources page as well okay all right um so hello we'll meet hello Dabo. yeah hello? Can go ahead yeah, this, this is lawrence okay okay so for the uh, appointment i don't know i'm going to celebrate this appointment you know uh group uh, rep for all the four groups are we Yes, yes. So, so what would be my task? Because I have a group, uh, WhatsApp group for my team, where it's in Docker, where we meet and discuss on solutions, assignments, and all that. So is it only on Discord that or they will reach out to me? How do I know when they want to meet? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll communicate that to you. I'll communicate oh, okay. that to you. Yeah, sorry okay, that this okay, is just number, okay. yeah. That's number one. Number two. Hmm. The uh, VM box that we have, we've already yes. set up a Windows server. Now, do okay. we need to set up a Linux server too after this class? Is it is it 
Do we need to no, set up a Linux not, server? You are, not, you are not setting up a Linux server. There's a Linux server that is created for you already. All you just okay. need to do is just to run that command, the SSH command, just okay. to have access to it. So just like okay. the way I did in my first, uh, when I showed you a command prompt, and I use okay. SSH to log into it so that I can run different commands. So this server is already there available for you. All you have to do is just connect to it. How do we run it? The SSH, sorry. Maybe so it's, on, do you have, yeah, sorry, so I'm, I'm sending do you have, okay. do you have Putsi? Yes, yeah, do you have Putsi on your terminal? Good. So once, once Nodin sends that file, right? For your cool. team, just copy that SSH minus I command, just copy it and then um, slam it on putty and that is all oh, you understand okay. you connect okay. you connect to that um to that server okay okay Lauren, oh, okay Lauren, don't, don't, no, don't can you do something within your back yeah i want to actually show them a better way is uh, like a way to yeah. log on to it okay let me show them yeah because you would have to um get the pem key so is that pem key i need to be um on the same directory where you have that pem key to log in so so no you can just show them um an example or like a brief demo on how to log in okay i'm going to use a uh, mobile x then because i think it's better and simple to use for everybody and um let me just share my screen okay um exit can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, yes. It's okay. not zoomed enough. I'll not zoom it. Don't worry, I'll zoom it. Sorry. Okay. Um, zoom, 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 zoom. Where did I see that zoom? I'm not zoom maybe. Okay. I'm not zoom. Okay, I'm not logged in yet. Okay. Okay, if that is the case, then let me bring it here. Um, Oh my gosh. Okay. So basically, um, so if you can see this screen now, you have, um, once you download mobile XTEM, anybody can download mobile XTEM, but I will advise you that you work as a group because you working as a group is going to be a long way. And then um, four, 10 people, 15 people cannot log in at the same time with the same account. That's one of the reasons why I created one account for one group because we want to see how you can think and reason together. And on your presentation day, I'm going to pick anybody in the group and ask anybody questions. So we have an attendance of people that are attending the session today. So I believe that if you work with your group, you should be able to answer a question on are you able to execute one of the tasks that you have been given. So um you click on session here once you click on session here you have ssh which is the protocol that you want to use once you click on ssh it tells you to what put in the words the remote host for that particular uh what's it called the particular um file that you are given to to use now if you want to click on the remote host now let me download the file that i just sent to you now um just a minute trying to download the file you know, start. You say what? Okay, not you, sir. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, I have just downloaded that file. So, for you to log into that file, if you look at that file, if you have your screen with you, if you have the what you call it, if you have the files with you, because I shared the file on um on our platform. If you have that file, you have the access, what's it called? You have some keys that are in that file. These are the different keys for the different, uh, what's it called, the different um, users. So for you to log on, you just have to come here, specify the, what's it called, the host, that is the IP address, which is 3.68.222.166. Specify the username. So if you are logging in with, what's it called, it, team Docker, for example, just say team Docker. And you know, you already have the port, which is 22, which I talked about as it was the SSH port. Then you can come to advanced here, select use private key. And the moment you click on private key, it tells you to go and select the private key that you want to use. I you have your private key saved in, I think, document or task. Okay, task, um, Team Docker. Okay, this is the private key for Team Docker. So basically, you put in the host name, the username, 
the port is already there, specify the private key, then click OK. Once you click OK, automatically it should connect. So that is just it. So right now, uh, you thanks, are in this thanks, watch, thanks. in this server. So that is just it. Thanks. The server is provisioned for everybody already. Thanks, so thanks, all you just thanks. need to do is just to connect. Yeah, thank all you. Right. You're welcome. So I will share the secret, the private key. I will share it with different things individually. Yeah. Thank all you. Right. Okay, all right. Um, thanks a lot, Norden, for that. So lastly, we'll meet on um, Thursday night by 10 p.m. just for um, maybe just between 30 to 45 minutes um, hands-on sessions on Linux administration. Right, so please get your terminals ready by, by um, Thursday. All right, so thank you, everybody. Then for next weekend, for next weekend... So what about we'll, tomorrow? Yes, yes, I was... I'm still going to talk about tomorrow. Okay. Then for next weekend, um, we've not concluded if, if we're going to be continuing um, Linux or PowerShell. But either way, let us be ready, right? So PowerShell is like another scripting language um, which can be used on both Linux and Windows as well, right? Um, we'll communicate that to you as soon as we have um, full information on that. Then lastly, tomorrow, We'll be meeting tomorrow as usual. Um, the time will be communicated to you, you know, but it's 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 most likely going to be in the evening, just like we did last week. All right. So teams, please get yourself ready so that you can present to show, you know, and um, based on the different tags that was given to you. Right. So I think that is that from my end. And does anybody else? Um, has any other thing to say?